in, please. Please sit down, sit down. Yes, Paul. Yes, sir. Uh, you are a mechanical engineering graduate hmm? yes, and working in Delhi Metro Rail. Yes, sir. Working right. Right. Let me see. And uh, we have heard the concept of driverless trains. Yes, sir. Can we explain how it is done and the chances of accident it is? What precautions are the metro taking for property? Sir, uh, driverless metro trains are being operated on uh, Pink Line and Delta Line. They are the first in India. What happens is in the driverless train is the automation has been increased with the involvement of CVTC system. In these driverless trains, the, our main uh, agenda is to reduce the uh, human errors. And in this case, automation is done and it is, it is rate of automation fourth. What, what we do is, the train on, in the morning gets started, gets starts in, on its own, does self-exhaustive tests the report of which is sent to uh, operation control center, then the train is inducted from the depot and, and sent on the main line. Currently, the train are equipped as unattended train operations. They can move without train operators also, but for safety purposes and for troubleshooting, uh, we have train drivers in those trains. And in, the, in, the, in those trains, they are equipped with push, to, uh, push button system, which for example, if a passenger needs to talk with the train operator or operation control center. So he can push the button and that call will be connected to the operation control center. In any case of emergency, if somebody is not feeling well, somebody has vomited or he has fainted, he can directly talk to the operation control center. And then the later, later on, we have planned in phase Y. Currently we have uh, train operators in all the trains. But in phase wise we will reduce the train operators. For example, we will do it like for three trains, there will, be, there will be one roving attendant. So, we'll reduce the uh, utilization of manpower that can be used in phase four construction. I've also heard this RRTS between Delhi and Meerut. What is the basic difference between Metro Rail and RRTS system? Is there any difference? Can we explain something on that line? Yes, sir. Sir, RRTS is the, uh, uh, the Metro Rail system which is uh, being connected with the Delhi and NCR region, there are three main corridors, priority corridors. The first one is being constructed by NCRTC between Delhi and Meerut. The corridor will be opened in 2023 only. Uh, and the section which is going to be opened is between uh, Saibabad and Duhai Depot. The, these trains are uh, functioning and will operate at a very high speed, semi-high speed of ranging from 160 to 180 km per hour. Secondly, the main difference is the metro rail which is operated by DMRC is inter, intra-city, it, it operates inter, intra-city. So the average speed which can be uh, obtained in Delhi Metro is 32 to 34 km per hour. However, because of the long long distance travel in RRTL, the average speed will be much higher. Secondly, the Metro Rail is, has, the, has, the, has the utilization for intra-city intra in the case of urban areas. However, the RRTS role is to curb the migration and have equitable development and so that the congestion in the Delhi can be reduced. Okay, one more question. Recently the budget was presented. Say some major features of the budget. What are the some major features? Sir, firstly the capital expenditure is again, uh, capital uh, expenditure has been increased. Secondly, the rationalization of tax labs has been done so as to improve the simplification. Thirdly, the, there has been a reduction of Manrega which has been that in consonance with increase in the other uh, allocations in other rural development schemes, for example, Jal, Jal, uh, Jal Jeevan Mission, and uh, there is one more mission I am not able to recall the name, in that they have done so currently, uh, and also sir, there have been provision for uh, railway railway expenditure which has been increased, and they are coming up with hydrogen uh, one petrol train. You said capital expenditure is being increased. Uh, someone said this is a merely to siphon more funds. More the government money on going to infrastructure, contractors will have their field day and people will make money, all the government projects. So how do you justify this? What, what should be done? What precautions should be taken for such things? So capital expenditure has a multiplier effect on different sectors of the economy. So when the capital expenditure is increased, because uh, the world is uh, undergoing a fear of recession, so through capital expenditure, with the building of roads, railways, construction, highways uh, and other areas, 
the uh, crowding in effect of private sector will be increased. However, there are uh, fear that they, uh, they can be siphoning of funds for that, for that. More transparency should be increased, automation, and we can use public financial management system which has been uh, introduced by the government. And also, there is, there is a provision of integrity, uh, integrity monitors which, uh, which are used in contracts which, uh, between the vendors and bidders. That, and they can independently, independently verify the uh, payments, audit, they can audit the expenditure. They can do that. Please. Okay. The Latin American countries are the countries which are, uh, which are below Mexico and South America and Central American countries. Okay. Yes, sir. Can you name a few? Yes, sir. Mexico. From Mexico it starts, then they are in Colombia, Cheru, Pili, uh, So, uh, Colombia, then there Ecuador, Brazil, Argentina, Anyways, uh, Chile, Peru, sorry. Why these balloons have been used by Chinese armies? Sir, uh, balloons may, uh, might be used uh, so as to gather the information regarding military establishments. No, why only balloons? The is this, the question is, why not drones, aircrafts, any other satellites? Why balloons? Sorry, sir, I'm not even talking. Anyways, you are from Kanpur. Yes, sir. You are from Kanpur, and Kanpur was a famous center of revolt of 1857. Yes, sir. So, what happened exactly there, and who led the revolt? Sir, in Kanpur, the revolt was led by uh, Nana Sahib. And in, the, in that, in that the uh, Nana Sahib was supported with Sandhya Tope and they had captured the city. However, with the increase of the uh, increase of the Britishers and led by Henry Havelock and Hugh Campbell, they again recaptured the city and Nana Sahib fled to the jungles in Nepal. So what were the factors why the road failed there? Why the uh, road wasn't successful in Kanpur? Sir, firstly, the military might of uh, Britishers was greater than the Indians. Secondly, the arms. So what was better in British military? Sir, uh, uh, military might, firstly might, secondly discipline, thirdly leadership. So, uh, and fourth, they were disciplined in the sense that they, they, they had a zeal to protect their motherland. However, we were missing that zeal because India as a nation was, as a nation was not being seen as an identity. They were all fighting for their own territorial and make their own own aims. So there is a famous uh, incident known as Bibi Ghar massacre. What is that? It happened in Kanpur. Yes, sir. It happened in Kanpur. Sir, uh, I have an idea, but not clear. But if I may allow, may be allowed. Yes. Sir, in Bibi Ghar massacre, uh, after uh, the women and the children, they were allowed to go. <coughs> They were allowed to pass through Kanpur through a tunnel. However, due to some miscommunication, the people captured those and they were massacred. It was also, I think, called Sati Chora massacre. So, is it same? Bibi Ghar massacre and Sati Chora massacre are the same? So, as far my knowledge goes, I think it is the same. Okay. So, you play chess? Yes, sir. So, how playing chess will make you a better civil servant? Sir, uh, playing chess helps in exercising of brain. They help in critical thinking and they help in gaining foresight. We have to see the our steps, we have to anticipate our enemy also. So in that case, in that we can have, we are, as a civil servant, we, uh, when we are doing performing our duties and roles in any situation, we have to anticipate what our steps will have uh, consequences and what I wish I should take so as to curb, control the situation. Thank you. Uh, you are you have opted geography. Yes, sir. You know in Himalaya we are ha we are having problems with regular intervals, landslides and other things. Yes, sir. Can you give me some action plan to stop it? How to stop it? Yes, How to prevent it? Uh, sir, firstly, uh, firstly. Uh, the, uh, the, any disaster has a three-stage scenario. Pre-disaster, during disaster, post-disaster. 
Now, to prevent the disaster, we have to uh, implement three disaster measures. For that, firstly, we have uh, firstly we should do community awareness. We should train the uh, community so that they can control the situation till the uh, NDRF, SDRF, or army any personnel arrives. Secondly, communication is a major communication is a major channel so that information dissemination can be done and the panic can be reduced in the people. So that should be enhanced. Thirdly, any infrastructure creation should involve EIA, environmental impact assessment and social impact assessment so that it does not lead to exceeding the carrying capacity of the area. Fourthly, the, there should be regular mock drills and training which can be provided. Lastly, sir, the panchayats and the panchayats should be enabled and should be strengthened with the help of tabletop exercises. I has asked about the preventive measures. What prevention could be done so that it doesn't occur? Is there any possibility? Can we fight against the nature? Can we change the nature of nature? What should be done? Sir, uh, in that case, we can have a background check and the history and the area, the hotspots of the landslide regions. We can uh, we can check those and we have we can and for that we can plan if any and we can project and forecast. Secondly, landslide is a is is sudden occurrence is a sudden occurrence which can be measured through with the help of ISROs, remote sensing agencies. For example, it can measure uh, it can measure the the movement of soil debris on a minute that can help in triggering the mechanism. However, because it is a sudden occurrence, the major role in, in it comes during disaster and post disaster. Event. Motor vehicles. We are all talking about conservation of energy. What are the latest motor vehicle engines uh, from the viewpoint of conservation of energy? Sir, uh, for conservation of energy, uh, we are uh, moving forward to electric vehicles in which hybrid hybrid is one, plug-in hybrid, battery operated. These are two three areas which are which we are working on. What are BS models, something called BS? Sir, there are barrel stage norms. Yeah. Yeah, sir. So for conservation of fuel and reducing of pollution, we have switched over from BS4 to BS6, mm -hmm. skipping the BS5. Mm -hmm. And in, the, in, the, in this BS6, there is a 80% uh, reduction in diesel engines from BS4 to BS6. Similarly, there has been reduction in NOx and uh, particulate matter. Is there some difference in their cylinder capacity and everything, exit mechanism, how it has improved from BS4 to BS6, the difference between the engines and these two things? Sorry, sir, I'm not going to solve it. Yeah. You know carbon credit? Yes, sir. <coughs> sir, carbon credit um, is a certified emission reduction which we gain after, uh, which, which which can be quantified, which a company gains after reducing the emissions which it takes from its operations. If I may give you an example, uh, currently uh, DMRC through its uh, areas of operations like regenerative braking, solar panels, they have uh, gained carbon credit from UN, United Nations. Do you think that uh, still that Delhi Metro is in a profitable uh, mode? Yeah. Sir, pre-pandemic, Delhi Metro was operating with a 75% 70, ratio, operating ratio. So, operate, operationally, pre-pandemic, it was pro in profit. However, net, it was net loss because of depreciation and interest payment. Post-pandemic, due to 2020 and 2021, because they were uh, halt in operation for around 8 to 9 months. And, but, uh, uh, Metro has some fixed costs, fixed costs, so salaries, payments, allowances and I try to operate for the its own staff and Delhi police and other emergency agency. It continued to operate and it, uh, its operation ratio has increased over 100 and now we are operating with a loss. So do you think that the Delhi police is involved in the metro or that uh, para uh, forces is involved in that metro? No sir, it, uh, it was in paramilitary emergency and uh, for Delhi metro staff also. Now, uh, how Delhi Metro taking international route uh, to increase the resources apart from that 
ticketing means that fear of the ticketing do you think that is this is there any provision is going on yes sir sir uh, currently as per annual report of 2122 we are we have the revenue in or from different stream our major revenue are fair box and non fair box revenue from fair box revenue 27% of our earnings are coming and from near non fair box we have property development property business we lease out the spaces bare spaces kiosks for shops and a major chunk of the non fair box revenue is coming from consultancy projects which Delhi Metro is taking, which is, for example, Dhaka Metro, Gujarat Metro, Jaipur Metro, these are, and it has, uh, it has recently bid for Egypt and Indonesia also. How geography will help you in administration? Sir, uh, geography has a major component of human geography, in which, we, uh, in which demography, birth rate, sex rate, this can help in gauging the scenario and because, because of this we, I can uh, use uh, various liter literature campaigns, awareness programs and can promote the parents, community, sensitize, sensitize themselves to come forward and take the benefits of education, health, infrastructure. Uh, you play chess. Yes sir. So you know about that Magnus Carlsen and Hans Niemann. Yes sir. What is that controversy in between? Sir, uh, controversy erupted firstly because Hans Niemann has a reputation of, use, of cheating in online, online chess.com. Now, the controversy increased when in Sinkfield Cup, the Magnus Carlsen had a match against Hans Niemann in, and Magnus Carlsen was in, had white pieces and Hans Niemann had black pieces. Magnus Carlsen being a very strong opponent, uh, very strong player with a very high rating and playing with the white pieces. It was. It is usually unexpected to lose with a player who has not even crossed 2700 rating. So after Magnus Carlsen lost with the white pieces, he suspected that Hans Niemann may have done something. So he backed out from that tournament and implicitly, implicitly said that Hans may have cheated, which he later clarified through an open letter on its Twitter. One nation, one election. Can you find? Uh, can you feel that it is possible in India? Sir, uh, till 1969, it was happening, and it can again happen. However, it has it need it it has it has a very high cost. Plus, uh, it has a very high cost, and there is a there is, will be a scenario where some legislative assembly will have to will have to curb their uh, cycle, and some may have to enlarge their cycle. Secondly. Through simultaneous elections, the exchequer expenditure may, may be curbed. However, the accountability of the executive due to regular elections to the public may be reduced. So, it is a possibility and for that regular de deliberation and concentration should be done. Thank you. So now, you wait for that feedback by our members. Just, just relax. For uh, feedback, some comments to... Uh, it's very good, but one thing should pay a little more attention in listening questions. Whatever is asked, you should organize your answer around that. When you know the answer properly, if you do not know the answer, then either you pass the question or then you can touch the peripheries. So I found that uh, okay, you okay. had a set uh, mind, you know that this question would be asked from a geography student. So you had completed the total answer, but question was asked only on the first part, which you almost escaped, and second and third you elaborated. So you should listen uh, carefully. And uh, rest all is fine, and when you know the answer, then there will be no problem for you, but uh, uh, frame the answer around the question. Uh, first, once you enter, um, maybe uh, you are unbutton your uh, coat. Uh, number one. Number two, the eye movement is little bit less. Take Third, uh, hand movement is too much. Uh, just try to control. When is your actual interview? Sir, after 10th March. 10th March, okay. And for that, um, Presentation, sir, has already elaborated each and everything. You should keep yourself around that question only. 
I have asked about questions related to that international route to generate revenue. You just come to that Gujarat and all. I am talking about the international. So you are taking the name of Gujarat and all. You just try to name the Dhaka, Egypt and whatever the international projects is going on by DMRC. Can you understand my question? So just try to be a little bit. Your presentation is good. Communication is very nice. But try to avoid all the things which you can in your control. Thank you. Sir. You are doing well. You will do better. Somehow a bit, a small amount of tension is there. Not much, much some relaxer, but try to be a bit more relaxed. Yes. And a video interview, of course, 10th March. Hai. We practice more on this under mirror case maybe how can have your face seems a bit reserved. Of course we don't want it to be totally again somewhat that is needed. Uh knowledge okay don't know what could be but 10th March you say budget Aji to pass what you cover, budget is a thing, current affairs will be there, international relations will be there. Engineer you are mechanical, so manufacturing sector is why not very strong in India? What should we do to do so? All these things can metro question can come. Keep a cool, calm appearance, keep a smiling face. Uh, we may not know everything, but then uh, supposing you don't know anything, you can say that a bit, uh, my knowledge in this bit is limited, but you can say a related film I have studied, related field. Maybe someone may ask you some more questions on that. So you have to try to bring the best out of yourself. That's all I can say. Uh, okay. Sir, anything have, from your side? I have one question. Uh, uh, for example, if uh, one panel member asks me the question, so should I look at him only or should I move my eyes? <laughs> it's a very, uh, but normally the person who asks you, you can look at him, can look at him. Initially you are looking at the chairman, but the person has asked you, you can look at him and give the answer. There's nothing very, very much on this, but that is there. If he is asking the question, you are... Uh, but sometimes in between during the answer, you can just give other what members... Was it, was it, was it, was it, but while listening the question, hmm. you should focus on the person. Yes. Oh, okay. He should not feel ignored that uh, he is uh, asking something and you are looking at him. Oh, yeah. correct. Basically, that would be bad. Which means, a little glance is how they are giving, but basically you look uh, at Or him. maybe some uh, counter question by other members, then you have to respond accordingly. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, anything else you want to know? Come and say, let's have, we have time. You can say anything else you want to know. Uh, for example, uh, I fumbled in that Chile and Peru. I was like, Cheru, Pili, Cheru, Pili and Pili. So I, you know, I just wanted to say you know, I just wanted to put a bit of pressure upon you. I also knew that you won't be able to recall all the names, and you succumbed. <laughs> that was it. Uh, so uh, uh, interview is the art of uh, you know answering. It is not, uh, although it is uh, how uh, what you answer, but it is more how you answer and how you answer when you do that. So. And moreover, it is not a factual test we are taking. It's a, not a quiz. It's not a quizzing. We are taking that some of that name you missed, like in a, that is, doesn't matter too much. The only thing when you are giving your answer, sir has already explained that you listen your question and keep your answers around them. That's it. See, the interview board is also looking at the questions. I see you have given a hobby, as we didn't ask, reading self-help books. Of course, you have already given this performance. You cannot change it now. So be prepared on what is self-help and why, when you read books, why don't you prefer some other books also? Why limit yourself to self-help books? But what I'm saying is whatever you like, like here, playing chess, the questions will be there. So you have already written, you cannot change it. So you self-help, you have to explain a lot. Yes, and that get prepared. Lessons, sometimes all the time, the department will time be constrained. What lessons you are taking from those self-help books? Are you practicing something? Are you planning when you become stigmatized somewhere? How would you use, you use this knowledge? You should be very careful about this. Sir, I have a lot of good things point here. I have to change your form, but I have to change my mind. Because you have a very specific hobby. Reading self-help books. You should be very careful. You must be having something in your mind. So be prepared on that. Okay. Chalo, thik hai na, or kuch hai na? Nahi, thank you. ठीक है अभी टाइम बहुत है एक बार और कुछ मॉक इंटरव्यू का प्रैक्टिस कर लेना घर में भी कर सकते हो मिरर के सामने एक और मॉक कुछ भी नहीं की